I'm Pavel Spichalski and I am an engineer. For the last six years I'm working on flight controllers and well, we can safely assume that I know how they work. Let me share some of that knowledge with you and let's have a journey through the flight controller mechanics. In today's episode let's talk about buses. All the buses that the flight controllers use to communicate with the peripherals to do what the flight controllers are supposed to be doing. Well, to fly your drones and airplanes. Flight controller, both software and the hardware, needs to be able to communicate with other devices. We have motors, we have servos used mainly on fixed wing to control the control surfaces. We have control, the RC link, the radio that is used to control where your drone and the flight controller should be flying. And finally, we have sensors. Sensors that tell exactly the flight controller what is currently happening with the drone, with the airplane. Today, we will completely ignore the buses that are used to connect motors and servers to the flight controller and we will concentrate only on the buses used by the sensors and by the control. We have UART, also known as the Serial Port, Universal Asynchronous Receiver Transmitter, we have the SPI, known as Serial Peripheral Interface, we have I2C and we have CAN bus. We will mostly talk today about the Serial, SPI and I2C and only mention something about the CAN bus. Let's begin with the serial port. Serial port, depending on how it's configured and connected, can be either unidirectional when device A only sends data to the device B, or the serial port can be made in bidirectional mode when both devices can talk to each other. Here, depending one more time on the number of wires, we have half duplex and the full duplex. Full duplex is the situation when you have the TX connected to the RX and the Rx connected to the Tx when the both device devices can fully independently exchange data from each one to another. The transmitter puts something on the Tx line and the receiver receives this thing on the Rx line. Or with the half duplex when you use only a single wire connecting two of the devices. Example of the half duplex is for example ghost protocol of the F port protocol when when you connect only one and only one wire and at one time only one device can use the bus to transfer the data. The most popular devices on our drones connected to the serial ports are of course serial receivers. Depending on the configuration it can be either using two serial ports like for example SBUS and SmartPort protocol connected to one FreeSky receiver or with the more, more modern solutions like the the Express LRS, Crossfire, Ghost or F-Port, there is only one serial port configured either in the half duplex or the full duplex mode to extend the exchange the data on the control, on the position of the stick and the switches that goes from the serial RX to the serial port and the telemetry from the flight controller to the serial RX. Next, we have, of course, GPS. GPS is almost exclusively are connected with the full duplex setup. And GPS, well, you exactly know what the GPS used for. All the others are, for example, Smart Audio, Trump Protocol, LIDARs, etc., etc., etc. Here, it really up to the manufacturer and the designer of the hardware to decide how things will be happening. And here also quite often, instead of the hardware serial ports, we have so-called software serial. Software serial is just a serial made by the CPU on the flight controller itself. Uh, advantage, uh, you do not need a hardware piece of the of the MCU to be able to do the software serial because in some of the cases you can configure the software serial or almost any pin however the challenge with that is that well it's slow and it's not really a good idea to put something important of the software serials and software serials are not working very fast
Next, we have the SPI. SPI as Serial Peripheral Interface. One more time, Serial and one more time, Interface. SPI is the full duplex bidirectional bus that also uses two separate wires just like a Serial port. However, comparing to the Serial ports, it's designed to be much, 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 much faster. There is one device that is called Master in the, almost all the cases our flight controller will be the master and there is a device called the slave whenever the master transmits any data from the buffer to the buffer of the slave at the same time the same amount of data is transferred from the slave to the master the great advantage of the SPI is that it's super 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 fast and you really can get data extremely fast from it the best example of the usage of the SPI are the yeah the gyros the accelerometers the thermometers built into modern emu uh, emu chips like mpo and icm and whatever we are using right now usually the one gyro something that we call gyro consists in the one package of the gyroscope accelerometer thermometer in some of the cases also you might have the magnetometer but those are really a rare cases and Thanks to the connection of this thing via the SPI, flight controller can get the data from the gyroscope as fast as possible and thanks to that be able to react as fast as possible to every change on the attitude, rotation, speed, whatever is happening on your drone. The next not so obvious usage of the SPI is the analog OSD. Yes, the chip used to render the analog OSD, the Max series chipsets, are connected to the flight controller via the SPI. And one more time, the flight controller is the master and the OSD chip is the, well, it's the slave. The flight controller tells the OSD chipset which character should be displayed in which place, in which position on your video feed, and OSD is doing exactly that. Next, next we have black box flash. The flash memory on your flight controllers with the flash, but without the separate SD card, also is connected via the SPI. One more time, the speed is the answer. You want to be able to transfer data as fast as possible from the flight controller to the black box flash, so that you can lock as much of the data without losing any of it. And also in some of the cases, not very, this is not happening really very that much often, we also can have the barometer connected via the SPI. And finally, do you know that the SD card is also an SPI device? Yes, the interface used to access the SD card is indeed the SPI. You just connect SD card pin by pin to the standard SPI bus on the flight controller and everything works as it should be working. Yes, the SD card goes falls back into pretty standard mode, but whenever flight controller puts anything on the master output, uh, line the data will be just sent to the sd card and then as exactly the same amount of data will be read from the sd card with the slave output to the to the flight controller itself yes things to remember sd card is the spi bus and you can basically even solder your sd card to your flight controller if you really 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 want to do it the next device we will be talking today is the I2C. I2C is old because it was created in the 80s and it's, well, it's slow, however, it's cheap and it's extremely, extremely popular. One of the biggest advantages of the I2C bus is that by default, well, by default, by design, it allows you to connect multiple devices to a single bus. Each device on the I2C has its own, has to have its own address, unique address, that is used by the master of the bus, in this case the flight controller, to communicate with it. Only the master can initiate the transmission and then it can tell by the address with which device the flight controller wants to communicate with. So, for example, when you have barrow and the magnetometer connected to the one physical I2C bus, then the flight controller has to say, I want to talk on the I2C bus 1 with the device of the 
address 0x70 to send this data to and then get the data back. Yes, it's possible to have multiple I2C buses and multiple devices connected to the multiple I2C buses. Uh, however, the most popular case is then when you have just one I2C bus broken out as the external bus when you have for example airspeed and external barometer and external devices connected to it and one for the internal usage when you have bar and the magnetometer for example or i don't know anything else you might have on your flight controller connected via the internal i2c bus the biggest downside, however, of the I2C is that it's slow. And uh, if you talk with anyone that would like to have some experience with the aviation and uh, automotive usages of the I2C, well, they will tell you that I2C sucks. It's slow, it's uh, very prone to any kind of the errors, hates longer wires, and there are many, 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 many problems with the I2C. And this is why on the most modern flight controllers, we also have something called the CAN bus. One more time, it's the device that allows you to connect multiple devices to a single CAN bus, but the CAN bus is designed to be prone, not to be prone to any kind of the problems that might be happening on the bus. Thanks to differential steering uh, and the differential communication uh, of the on the wires, CAN bus is very much very resistant to any kind of the disturbances in the electric field, in the magnetic field, and so on and so on and so on. However, currently the CAN bus is not that popular because my, mostly there is not really that much of the need to use the CAN bus. However, Ardu Pilot is fully capable of using GPS, LIDAR, other devices to be connected via the CAN bus to do whatever Ardu Pilot wants to do. I'm Paweł Spechalski. Thank you very much for watching and happy flying.